All right, hello everyone. We are setting up here for hole number three, which is going to be very long. So I'm going to keep that in my mind for my decision making. And there you see me, you know, this is gonna be the one time that I'm gonna throw big dog on here um, because I want to ensure that I can hopefully get this down there or at least close to the green. And uh, the way that you're going to want to, uh, you know, do this is either with a berserker or a titan ball. Um, for today, I'm just going to go with a titan. But in a later scoring round, if I do believe that uh, you know eagle is going to be a possibility, you will see me kind of club up from that as necessary in the later rounds. <clears throat> You see, with just an extra mile four, distance is really going to be the biggest critical thing. Plus, not having enough wind this is going to be another. Um, what I like to do is I like to do curl shots, but that really isn't going to be too effective. Um, one of the things that the curl shot does is it just kind of gives you extra momentum. Um, but when you don't have a lot of curl to begin with, it's going to be kind of negligible. But I'm going to do it anyway here. So the way that I do it with, I, need, I know I need to come in probably about two rings. Probably doesn't have enough curl. Punch me miss in the left rough. But I am trying to stay definitely, you know, pretty left here. Um... Like I said, I might be able to add, you know, 10 yards to my ball by doing it that way. I hit 400 with a berserker ball. I might be able to get it to approach 430, 440. Would be nice. <clears throat> One of the biggest things that, you know, is kind of nice about this course is it's very wide open. Um, this is probably my favorite course in the whole game. Um, and this is kind of the one time that, you know, I'm actually going to tell you that, uh, you know, pulling out extra mile for a lot of these holes, um, don't do it on the par three. But uh, if you have to pull out extra mile on any of these holes, par fours and par fives, uh, it's not going to be the end of the world because the fairway is huge. So... <clears throat> With that being said, though, there's still a lot of precision shots, and we're going to, you know, keep that in mind for our shots. Um, now, if I really want to get an eagle here, one of the methods that I do, um, especially when I don't have a good angle to get it up there on the green, um, and I can't really, you know, roll it out too well, you're going to see me just kind of beat it right at the hole here. Kind of can. Great shot. I would like to have not had that great ball, but let's just see where I get it. Skipped over. So that's what I wanted to show you. If you hit that top of the bunker just right, it skips forward out. If it doesn't, you still leave yourself a nice, easy, short shot um, from the bunker. Um, and I believe that's where I was in the pro tournament. So if you want to see the way that I did it for pro, I was in the sand. All you have to do is hit perfect ball. You don't have to really play the wind. It just comes down to perfect ball, get your eagle. And you're going to see something similar in um, this tournament. You know, if I can get the ball down there far enough. Um, you know, the shot that I was going for, there's some skill involved, but it's also, you know, a little bit of a luck shot. But that, um, I did talk about it in my pro tournament. If you also want to see another viewpoint, um, feel free to check out my pro guide. You know, the wind's going to be very similar, just a little bit stronger. And, of course, you know, I really don't mess around with the green grid too much on this course. So this is probably the biggest course that I like to, uh, you know, just... Perfect shot! Right to the bottom of the pin there. <clears throat> Even if you, you know, great ball left, great ball right from that close, you will still make the pitch. So I just like, you know, eliminating all that slope and anything bad that could happen to your ball. And there you see, you know, I was able to also help this guy, you know, 
come up with an easy birdie as opposed to needing to take par here. So that's also a good thing. But let's see how well that goes. Nope. Just I, I knew it was going to be close. I could just see by the way that uh, you know he played it that there was a chance that that was going to hit the fairway. I wanted to see what that was. But there you can see, you know, still going to be eagleable. Um, and like I said, even if I couldn't pop it up onto that fairway and it just, you know, is in the top of that bunker somewhere, um, it's still technically makeable. Um, and there's, you know, going to be a chance that you're going to also land it over onto the fairway. Um, and it is going to die, uh, like if you do do it right. Um, you don't want to land it onto the green, so you want to be able, have a little distance control. I could just kind of size that shot up and tell, especially with not a lot of wind, that it was going to be close. Um, but there was a chance that, you know, I was going to land it on the fairway. And in the event that it does land on the fairway, not the end of the world, um, because it does, you know, kind of use a, a little bit of a backstop. Um, if, an, if, for example, you know, you had no spin and hit it just perfectly into that face, it would probably hold the fairway um, with all that top spin that I had on it. Um, it will tend to uh, run through and go into the back rough, but will leave you for another you know, easy chip to where if you could just perfect ball it, you will make the pitch. So good luck with that hole, and I'll see you guys shortly for hole number four.